when you wake up on your holiest day and 1,500 of your fellow Jews are slaughtered, yeah, that you are the victim of terrorism. I'll just be very honest. While going check it out, Charles Keck takes on students who accuses Israel of playing victim. Whoa. I feel it's the other way around, but like, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Like, what are your thoughts about this? And then a lot of people don't really like talking about it, but like, I feel we should because it's going to make people who are defending some people see the light. And I believe media is actually painting Israel as the black man. But let me know your thoughts on this. Special to like, share, subscribe my channel. If you want to see more content like this, let's get straight into this. Given the current situation, the, the attacks on October 7th, um, I feel like the nation of Israel might have been, uh, have, has been doing that in sense of uh, referring to the attacks uh, as Israel's 9-11 while simultaneously funding Hamas. If this is Israel's 9-11, which we use our own 9-11 to fund decades of war to fill the pockets of military contractors, how do we look at what's going on right now and avoid making the same mistake? Yeah, yeah I, I, I get that question. So I, I want to make sure I'm, I'm very morally clear here. Um, sometimes you are a victim, right? If you get shot on the streets of L.A., you are a victim. The problem is we have a supply and demand problem with victimology in the West. We have a bunch of people that are incredibly blessed walking around acting like victims because somebody said something that offended them. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> so, of course, sometimes you are a victim. When you wake up on your holiest day and 1,500 of your fellow Jews are slaughtered, yeah, that you are the victim of terrorism. True. I'll just be very honest. Uh, and that's the equivalent of 50,000 Americans. So, and, and I will also say, though, that to Israel's credit, they're taking matters into their own hands. And while they are trying to, of course encourage and increase sympathy for their cause, it's now Hamas that's playing the victim. It's now Hamas that says, oh, stop bombing us, stop doing all this. And I'll be honest, it falls on deaf ears for me. It's like, wait a second, did you not launch an unprompted attack into civilian corridors, into homes and schools and nurseries on a holy day? So, you know, spare, spare me your caterwauling. You guys were the ones that launched this war, and war is nasty, war is awful, and they're saying they'll do it again. The Hamas leader comes out and he says, just a matter of time till every single day is October 7th. To your point, which I really resonate with, is that I'm not a neoconservative. I do not believe our foreign policy should be an instrument to remake foreign countries in a quote-unquote Western image. I think that the Iraq and the Afghanistan war teaches us that. And sure. I think we need to be, that's why in my remarks, I emphasize the border, what's happening in our own country. We need to balance what's happening in Israel, which is obviously important, but also understand that we have some serious problems here in this country. And I do not like when leaders focus more time, energy, and attention on foreign conflicts than our own. Guys, after Hamas launched the attack, I really don't get what they were expecting. That Asia would just say, no, we won't fight back and stuff like that. But no, like... It's heartbreaking. Like, I honestly believe that the war should not have started. Yes, it's, it breaks my heart that it did because to think of it, like, just think of it. You know how many people died? Schools shut down, businesses shut down, like, people's life savings gone, people's investment. Like, it's, see, it's not. To think of it is heartbreaking, and I believe everyone feels some certain kind of way to think about the world. Like, war is disgusting. It's not something that's supposed to be happening. Like, first of Russia and Ukraine now, this. But, like, I would say this. The war should end, and I believe Hamas should make, should create a peace deal, because Israel actually sent the peace deal, and they rejected it. They should make a reasonable peace deal that they can both accept. And, guys, let me know what you think about this. Like, I really want to get your thoughts on this. But like, I honestly believe Hamas is at fault and Hamas is one playing victim. But like, let me know your thoughts. See, I might be wrong, but like, I'm open to corrections. Like, I'm not rigid on my answer. But this is what I think. At this moment, this is what I think. That Israel was actually forced to do what they want to do because, yo, you, you just can kill, bro, 1,500 people. See, I can say this with my full chest. If something happens to my brother and I know who did it, it's not going to be funny because I, I will go all out on you. And see, this is how life is. You can't poke someone and I expect him not to like retaliate. Like, it's, it's not possible. I know 
as sad as it is, but like, let's just stick to the truth. It's heartbreaking. And the world should not have happened, but it has. And I believe a peace deal should be made so it can end because like a lot of people are suffering from this who don't even be part of it. That's just the heartbreaking thing. A lot of Palestinians don't be part of this. But guys, don't think about this. Such a like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.